Hey, what's up, high school? What is going on? Pastor Aaron here, and I'm excited that you guys are here locked in. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome to the fam. Uh, we've been in a series, and we've been talking about prisms. Um, and if you don't know what a prism is, a prism is an object um, that is pretty boring and pretty ordinary, to be honest, but when you shine light on it, everything changes. Uh, and when you put light on a prism, all of a sudden, there's all of these different colors and all of these different lights that you didn't see before. And what we're saying in this series is that Jesus is a lot like that. Jesus is a lot like a prism that when you shine light on Jesus, there's so many things that you didn't know about Jesus before that you can learn when you when you shine light on him, when you focus in on Jesus. And so whether you are a Christian or whether you're not a Christian, um, everybody has heard about Jesus at least once or twice. Right. Everybody knows who who Jesus is. You can go to uh, thousands and thousands of miles away or you go to another country. And in some historical fashion, people have an idea who this guy Jesus is. Is But even though you may know who Jesus is or even though you may have heard of who Jesus is, when you look closer and you focus in more on who he is, I promise you there are things that you will discover that you have never discovered before. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. I don't know about you, uh, but growing up, it seemed like to me, and I don't know if you had this experience, but it seemed like for me that every household that I went into, there was always this picture of Jesus, right? Every church that I went into, there was always this image, this portrait of Jesus. Now, I know for a fact that every person's grandmother, <laughs> there's a picture in your grandma's house, and it is a portrait of Jesus. And, I, you know, obviously when I think about that, those pictures aren't real because they didn't have cameras back in those days. They didn't have painters and all of those different things. I don't even know if they had color back then. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they had any of those things. But when I look at those pictures, like I know that that's not the real thing. But here's what happened to me. And maybe this has happened to you as well. When I look at those pictures, it paints an, a mental image of what I would imagine Jesus would be like. Now, you've seen the pictures before, like there's Jesus in the picture and he has like this little smirk on his face. And then like there's this amazing glow behind Jesus. And you're like, oh, my gosh, like, wow, he probably was really like that. Or there's this picture of Jesus and he's sitting with all of his disciples on a table just like this. And they're eating food. And you're like, oh, OK, um, that's probably how Jesus was. And or maybe you've seen pictures and Jesus hair is like like flowing in the wind and his his eyes are really bright and he has like this perfect beard and like uh, everything looks perfect about Jesus. Or maybe there's pictures you've seen where Jesus is like, Jesus, is that really you? Because he looks kind of hungry. He looks like he's been through some things and you're like, uh, I don't know if this is the Jesus that we want to put up. Right. But but whatever picture you have in your mind when I talk about this is sometimes that that image um, can get ingrained in our minds. And sometimes we make the make an assumption of that's really how Jesus is. And, it, and, and really, the problem with that is that it makes makes us ask a couple of questions. When we look at or we think of whatever image or whatever picture of Jesus you have in your mind, it makes you ask the question, is Jesus really like that? Is this is Jesus really like that or or is Jesus really real? And it makes you ask the question, if that isn't an accurate picture of Jesus, then what is Jesus really like? Or sometimes it makes you ask maybe an even deeper question. And maybe you say something like, well, if Jesus is God and this picture paints Jesus as God, then why does God allow bad things to happen? And, and, and the problem is that it shapes our assumptions about Jesus, and sometimes our assumptions can be based off of something that's not real. Now, now the good news for all of us today is that we don't have to assume who Jesus is. We don't have to guess who Jesus is. All we have to do is go to the Bible and go to God's word to understand who Jesus is and get a, the best and most accurate picture 
uh, of who he is. So um, there is a couple of writers, a lot of writers actually, that wrote about the life of Jesus. There's four in particular that that really details um, the life of Jesus when he started his ministry at about 30 three or 30 years old, excuse me. Um, and so Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, they all write these accounts of what happened with Jesus in these three years because so much happened in those three years. One particular writer, Luke, writes about this and he's trying to convince his writers like, hey, the Jesus is a person that we probably should pay a little attention to. And so he tells this story in Luke chapter four of something that Jesus did when he went into the synagogue. So just to give you an idea of what's happening happening during these days, uh, people who follow God, they would walk into the synagogue and they would open up a scroll, which was probably an Old Testament scripture, and they would literally just read the scroll and they would sit down. So, so here's what happened in, in Luke chapter four. Uh, then Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about him spread quickly through the whole region. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him and he unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. Now, before we even go any further, um, let, let's just figure out what's happening here um, in, in this um Scripture where Jesus is walking to the synagogue and he's literally opening up the scroll. He just so happens. And I think Jesus kind of knew what he was doing, but it just so happened that he unrolls the scroll uh, where Isaiah, the prophet, is about to say something. Now, if you know anything about Isaiah, the prophet, Isaiah was a respected prophet. He was a person that was God's messenger and people listened to Isaiah. I mean, whatever Isaiah said, people were like, OK. Isaiah the truth, like he's spitting real facts. And so I can listen to Isaiah. So Jesus opens up the scroll. He he pretty much goes straight to Isaiah's prophecy. And here's what he says. He says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives and that the captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Then he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. Then he began to speak to them. The scripture you have just heard has been fulfilled this very day. Y'all, if there was never a mic drop moment in scripture, <laughs> this was it. Literally, Jesus picks up Isaiah, reads it, and then he drops the mic like, boom, what are y'all going to do now? Right. But here's what Jesus was doing. Jesus literally was revealing himself in the scriptures. Here's why this is important, because people believe that Isaiah's prophecy was 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 real. It was facts. It was what people knew to be true. And basically, Jesus was saying, hey, everything that you've read about Isaiah and everything that Isaiah, the prophet, was talking about, it was about me. And so everything that you've been looking for in your life, it's right here. Like that is the craziest mic drop moment that I've ever seen in, by, in the Bible. But but here's why this is so key, because people were looking for a Messiah. People were looking for a savior. They were looking for somebody to come and 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 do something very supernatural and do something very uh, crazy in their day. But here's the problem. They had a picture in their mind. In their mind, they thought that the Messiah would come and overthrow the government and say, you know what, we're going to start a rebellion and nobody's going to move until the Messiah says so. Right. They thought that the Messiah would come and be the next great political leader. They thought that the Messiah would come and say, you know what, this king isn't doing it right. It's time to be a new king. I'm here. I'm going to be your new king. Right. That's what they had. That was the picture that they had in mind. But Jesus was a different type of Messiah. He was different than the picture or the image that they had in their mind. Because when Jesus came to the earth, Jesus came not to overthrow government. Jesus came not to start a political movement, but Jesus simply came to make wrong things right. 
He came to to make wrong things right. And that's why when you see Jesus doing things like helping out the poor, performing miracles to people who were blind, he empowered women so that they felt validated in who they were and who God created them to be. Jesus did these things because he wanted to make wrong things right. Now, here's even more beautiful thing about Jesus uh, and who he revealed himself to be. Because you would think that all the bad stuff that happens in the world, because we go back to the question, well, if Jesus is God and if Jesus is all of these things, then why does bad things happen? Because it would just be so easy for Jesus to snap his fingers and all the bad things go away. Right. It would be easy that way. But here's what Jesus did. Jesus not only came to make wrong things right, but Jesus came to invite us to join him in making wrong things right. Jesus literally gave his life to give us an opportunity to join him and join in and making wrong things right. So 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 here's how that looks. There's a lot of change that we want to see in the world that that surround us. When we think about what's happening in Ukraine, when we think about the injustice that happens around us, when we think about sickness and disease and even a pandemic. There's so many things that are wrong that we would love to change, that we would love to make things right. And the good news for every single one of us is that Jesus is inviting us to join in in making wrong things right. And so here's the point. Before you can see change, you have to invite change in your own heart. And so here's the challenge for all of us today. It is to ask Jesus to change us, to start, that that the change would start in us. And as Jesus changes us and changes our, our heart, that we would join in and be a part of the change that we want to see. So, so how, does that, how does that look? Every single day that you live, when you go to school the next morning, when you go home to your parents, uh, when you go out into that basketball team or that football team or when you go to the club or whatever you are a part of, you ask yourself this question. When you see something wrong, ask yourself, what would Jesus do in this moment? If Jesus was here right now, how would Jesus respond in this moment right now? And imagine How different your life could be if you saw yourself as part of the change you wanted to see. Imagine how different your life could be, how situations can be different if you saw yourself as part of the change that you want to be. That's what a prism is. When you shine light on an area, it changes how you see it. When you shine light on Jesus, it changes how you see him forever. And when you allow Jesus to shine light in your life, it changes how you see yourself and what you're able to do forever. And so here's the thing, y'all. We can be a part of making wrong things right. That's the challenge. So let's see how we can invite God to help us do that every day. Let's pray. God, thank you so very much for this amazing reminder that we can be a part of the change and that we can be a part of the change because Jesus was a part of the change. Jesus is the change. And so, God, I pray that um, for those of us that don't have Jesus in our heart, that we would invite him into our heart to change us. And as Jesus changes us, that we would join in in changing the things that we want to see changed, that we would make wrong things right and that we would shine light of who you are to the rest of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.